Pretty girls, what's brew and welcome back to the channel. Didn't think I'd do a Chantal react quite so fast, but the lovely barbecue chicken has decided to give us a cut down of about 10 minutes. So I don't have to go through a whole live. Now I did watch some of it last time. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can hear my washing machine, but it has just hit hyperdrive. <laughs> if you can, apologies. Anyway. She had a live which I think was called I Saw the Best Thing or something like that. And uh, the best thing was a cute dog at the 7-Eleven like she was going to go anywhere else. But it was quite a long live, not as long as some, but more than I necessarily wanted to watch. I had it on in the background while I was doing some other things yesterday. And now barbecue chicken has come in with an 11 minute and 36 second edit. So here we go. If you want a slightly more expanded edit, I believe Just Saying has one that's about 55 minutes. So if you want a little bit more, it's there. But um, this seems better for reacting. Okay, let's get into it. Oh, I'm so sick of popcorn after all that popcorn I ate. Yeah. Cottage core. Look what Modesty did to me. I'm she couldn't be cottagecore if she tried. I quite like cottagecore, I, that whole vintage thing. I'm not in like trad wife territory or anything, but man it's a vibe you know just the relaxation of it but you could dress Chantel in anything you wanted and she just wouldn't match the vibe just joking remember when you said doo-doo looks like a breed of dog that hasn't been invented yet but old ladies are going to love it <laughs> did the she say, I say that man, i don't even remember i said that i don't remember her saying that but if she did that's unusually witty for her horrible but unusually witty you guys have to keep i'll keep you company because uh you know the loneliness and the depression have really gotten to me today, I have to say. Oh, set yourself up as a victim straight away. Because clearly this is our responsibility. This is not foodie herself should be responsible for her own being. She shouldn't change her habits or go to a doctor or, you know, get outside a little bit. The things that might improve her mood or improve her physical health. No, no, we have to stay with her. We are responsible if this goes wrong. This is pathetic. I'm a grown woman. Yeah. Think of it this way. Normally, when I'm at home, any time of the day, any time, any time of the day, any time of the night, if I want to go hug and kiss a handsome man, I can just do that. I realize the point of her saying this is to be like, no, he's there all the time because we love each other. Hun, the most contact you've had from him is him patting you like a dog. You want him to put more of him than that on you, then you are going to have to slide into his DMs with some shit pictures. Not only a handsome man, the handsome man, but now I can't. How come you can't cut your trip short? I have my reasons, guys. It's all you need to know. She started laughing there because she knows it's a lie and she just couldn't keep a straight face. I have my reasons. They're the reasons you think and I can't think of a better excuse, so you know. <laughs> Why am I depressed? There's so many reasons to be depressed. She's been very high recently and that doesn't tend to help her depression even though she calls it medicine. Being stuck in Thailand realizing how incapable she's become because Regardless of how difficult it was, she was a lot more independent when she was in Canada. And because she has this long-held belief that if you just eat healthy for a couple of weeks, even though she hasn't done it, anything can be cured and be fine, the true realisation of how far she's fallen there is quite the shock to her, even though it shouldn't be. I know, I just can't make content right now, you've got to give me some time. <laughs> you've been there for four weeks, how much time do you need? Exactly! Exactly. You've been there for four weeks with no plan. How much time do you think people need? Because if you haven't done it in four weeks of nothing else to do, when you've clearly had time to be live streaming for whole work days because you're bored, what do you think we expect from you? Freaking out. Why are you obsessed with pay someone's payday, Sierra? Are you happy on your payday? You're never happy. You should be. Payday's a nice day. But with Foodie telling so many lies, when her behavior changes on payday tends to be very telling like the things she then chooses to do that maybe she had said oh i'm not going to do that you know I'm, i don't see it worth the money or what have you so she knows why people are asking the friggin' hell actually i've just stopped relying on paydays like number one like youtubers get paid every month so yeah <laughs> paid too who cares about payday like you get paid it just it feels like you don't even get paid when <laughs> you get paid once a month i used to get paid once a week at some jobs really that may have been true. Like, I don't understand why she's so angry at this. I know in America, it's a lot more common 
to be paid every couple of weeks. I don't like to call it bi-weekly because bi-weekly sounds like it's twice a week to me, even though I know it means every two weeks as well. But you get paid every fortnight. And I know some people don't and some people do, but it's a lot more common in the UK to get paid monthly. Again, there are exceptions. So aside from when I was very young and doing like beginner part-time jobs, like retail and things like that, I've always been paid monthly. And actually when I'm here and I have my summer, I get paid for two months in my summer and then have to stretch that out until it's time for school again. So I have to budget for two paychecks at once. This isn't a problem for me really, because I do budget. I think it would be a disaster for her because she doesn't tend to um, keep her money spaced out evenly. We do see when she starts cooking at home a week before payday. Just as barbecue chicken says here, that's because you blow all your money in the first three days. But just say like, it's not like you get paid. Excuse me, you get a bigger paycheck because you get it once a month. And was she still going to say that when she was earning 20 grand a month? I don't think so. That, I thought that was a long time to wait. I've paid it every day for my business money to wait until payday once a month. Are the other people in your business aware of that, Salah? <laughs> because you do not own that business alone. <laughs> Luckiest man. <laughs> I don't even know, like, your pay, your pay business, that's your business, you know? Yeah. So when she gets paid and money goes over, they are together because, of course, married people share money. But she doesn't know anything about his money, even though he, of course, pays for everything. Mm. That doesn't sound quite right. If you ask strangers, <laughs> like, I'm happy for payday. I want to go around and say, yes, um, are you happy for payday? If you live paycheck to paycheck, you are. And I used to live that way. You can be happy for payday regardless of whether you do or don't. Like, the person in the comments is just trying to see what information they can get to fall out, yeah? Because Chantelle historically has not been great at managing her money. And with her being in Thailand, coming in and saying, oh yeah, I want to spend X amount a day. And then being high on gummies for a lot of it. I can't imagine she's in budget. So that's why she's being asked. Of course, people are happy for payday. And I wouldn't even begrudge it to her. I mean, she does this to herself for money. At the very least, she should get the money. She's ruining everything else. For a long, 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 long time. What's today, the 20th, 20th? So technically, not all YouTubers, but most YouTubers get paid on, like, you don't get paid on the 21st. You get your pay, like, release between the 21st and the 26th of the month. And you, your paycheck goes in your account, not that same day. Like, it takes a few days. Yeah, I usually get paid, depending on the day it falls, I usually get paid the 24th or the 25th. They tend to be towards the latter end. And I think it's just dependent on quite a few variables in terms of like how they're sending the money out, when it's uh, when it's able to get through the banking system, that kind of thing. But I love how she's sitting there like, oh, I don't even think about money anymore. But at the end of every month, when we're starting to go towards the paycheck, she starts pumping out more videos because um, YouTube ratifies what you're going to get paid on the 21st or the 26th at the end of the previous month. So at the end of September, we're going to see even more videos. And again, not begrudging her because, you know, money is useful, but she has debt in Canada. She hasn't paid her taxes in, what is it, four years now. She's on a payment plan for prior taxes but not for the current ones, because I guess that hasn't come up yet. To the extent that her credit is so bad, she couldn't resettle in Canada easily. And she's got absolutely no plans for the future. Like, I, I wouldn't say she's comfortable financially. I would say she's comfortable enough ignoring it to not worry about it. I'm not, I'm not a rich person. You know, I'm thankful for everything I have, but uh, I'm not going to pretend like, oh yeah, I have millions in the bank, I don't need to worry about anything. I don't need to worry about paydays. One of those... You've literally just said you don't worry about paydays. What are you talking about? <laughs> but it is nice not having to really worry, like, paycheck to paycheck wise like that. Those days are so stressful. Like, I don't know. I know, babe. People think you're in Spain. Who cares? Sorry, that was a bit of a slur. He put into the chat that it was in Spain. He was trolling because uh, his passport doesn't allow him to go to Spain easily. But, you know, it's not a shocker. But gaslight a little harder. Sierra, listen, I'm not saying this is the case, but even if I wanted to give all my money to a man, who gives a shit? What's it to you? Right, so she does, in fact, give all her money to Salah. Like, any time she's like, well, it's not true, but if it were, come on now, Chantal. But it's not the case, because I don't have money. I really don't. Hey, goodbye. You get paid every month. You do have money. You don't have as much money as you used to, but it's enough to supplement your living in Kuwait. 
you get paid, you pay whatever you owe to the courts, and you send the rest over. And then you both use Salah's card because you don't have a bank account because you're not there as a resident. So miss me with this shit, thank you. Yes. So. <laughs> and that's why she's laughing, because she knows she's lying. You're technically right. He called me a freak of nature, yeah? So it's out of the loving. I call my cat a stupid loser. <laughs> Salah has been escalating these things now. I think trying to prove what she's saying, so making jokes at her expense, but like they're getting more pointed and I feel like you might be enjoying it a little bit too much. And she definitely has a history of accepting insults as, you know, joking and a proof of love because she will excuse anything. So when Nada started calling her a buffalo, she was like, no, no, he's joking. He was not joking. But if she has to take it as a real comment, that's a lot harder for her. So no, 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 of course, we, we just love each other. They're terms of endearment. Saying he's putting in a gym that she'll never use and uh, talking about how he's gonna have to lock the kitchen door. Yeah, that's just, just love, isn't it? I love, because I love her to death. Don't you get it? It's irony. That's not what irony is. There's a kind of humor in marriages, especially with me. Like, especially with me. Like, I have the hugest sense of humor. Like, that's not the first huge thing about you that comes to mind, and I don't even mean physically there. But I am British. And my dad was born in Scotland. Like, he was raised in England, born in Scotland. My granddad was Scottish. When I say we are coded in the blood to rip the piss out of the people we love, like, the shit we say to each other, yeah? I understand banter. I understand incredibly harsh things being okay within family because we know where the lines are. That is not where Chantel is right now. That's why you guys like to watch me. You, I make you laugh, whether it's at my expense or whatever reason, right? So, of course we're going to make jokes. You guys are more offended by it than I am. You, I don't know. She's raged a lot online. <laughs> as I said, this whole thing where she'll excuse anything as love was a whole conversation during the Nata era because... We could see his abusive behavior long before she was willing to acknowledge it. And I don't think any woman, even one as heinous as Chantel, should sit there and accept someone degrading her all the time and that be the only yardstick they can measure affection from. That is not a healthy relationship. And as I say, I come from a family that is perfectly fine in saying some things to each other. So it becomes a conversation because... Many moons ago, when we were more concerned about Chantel, there were things being said to her that she should have found offensive because it showed a complete lack of respect for herself. Even with her being a terrible example of humanity, I would want better for any person. You guys have been more offended than every single thing that has single-handedly happened to me in life. You guys are more appalled and bewildered about it. You talk about it more than I do. That's not a good sign. Everything. And I don't need Gore World, for example. Uh, and think about this logically. If Gore World were to crumble completely, mm -hmm. minus me, I'd still be here making content for you guys. And you would still be here watching me. There would be maybe, okay, maybe it would I would let's say I take a view cut. Yes, you would. I'd still be here standing. You'd be there surviving for as long as you physically could, for sure. I don't think she'd ever completely lose her audience because she's done so many awful things, which is one of the reasons she attracts reactors to begin with, that anyone who was going to go would be gone. And she does occasionally exhaust people and she loses a chunk, but I think she'll always have an audience, even if it shrinks a little. But I'm pretty sure at some point, actually, let's listen, because she'll probably say it right after I say it. I don't need them, you know? But like, I heard her say, someone say, I think it was, I was watching Hecate, I was listening to Hecate's Daughter Street, and she was listening to Kalari. Don't, don't, don't get all excited, honey. I don't want you people raw, trust me. Well, you obviously do, because you're watching. Like, yes, you're watching through a reactor, but <laughs> come on now. Like, when you're talking about not watching reactors she watches a huge breadth of reactors because she always knows what's going on with ffg she always knows what's going on with yaba she keeps tabs on the big names sometimes through other reactors but the big names nonetheless but she also keeps tabs on the smaller channels 
And you don't know where to find those smaller channels unless you're looking around. So let's not start with this right now, shall we? It's fine that you watch people, okay? Because it's about you. So of course, you're gonna be interested in what people say. I think she knows enough to know it's terrible for her. I think she knows enough to know that she cannot control herself when she hears things, but it's okay to say there's a huge community built around me and sometimes I wanna see what's going on. Which is why when she was missing for a day or two when she first got like seriously sick, she wrote on her community tab, oh, I've just gone to see if Girl World has crumbled or Girl World has burned or something like that. Because we do have a tendency, and you know, I've got to give it to her, when Chantelle disappears for a day, the community tends to eat it young. So, you know, people get bored, people start arguing and infighting. But importantly there, she went to check because she knows that, because she follows. <laughs> she was like, talking about how like she could, at least she could put her socks on standing up. Uh-huh, okay, but doesn't do it. But like, who cares how you put your socks on? Your socks are coming on on your way. What does it matter how they get on? Like, who cares if you have to twist your leg this way versus this way? You do. Because you knew that it gets attention because you previously said you couldn't put your socks on and Pete's had to help you. And so the only reason you filmed it was to prove that you could do it. And now you're mad that it's a talking point because you have to twist your body into rather weird shapes to be able to, instead of just lifting your leg up and putting it on normally. You do you, you make accommodations for your size. I don't blame you for that, but you're the one who shone a spotlight on that. And you're the one who filmed it to get a few more people talking. So don't get mad now that they are. Who gives a shit? Like, why does that matter? Like, does that make me any less of a person just because I put my socks on differently? So stupid. No, it doesn't make you less of a person. It just means you're willing to cash in on it and this is the consequence. Putting your socks up on standing up is overrated anyways. But Nick losing all that weight was crazy for real. Um, yeah, it was. It's really good. I mean... I think she is seething about this just because he had gotten so big that if he went away and did it, in theory, she could do the same. Now, don't underestimate what he did because I don't care how long he was fat. I don't care how long it took him to do it. It's incredibly difficult to get up that high and then to get back down that low. However you do it, whether you do it with assistance, whether you do it without. So actually, he's a really extreme example of a success. And it's not something everyone could be successful in. But I think Foodie is really feeling that pressure because people can turn to a very comparable example of, look, this mukbanger did it, but he took time away to do it. And maybe you should think of doing the same and it makes it harder to argue that she shouldn't. She'll try, don't get me wrong, but it makes it harder. But he didn't have like a lifelong struggle with weight. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like it would be easier for someone like him who doesn't have lifelong addictions to food or stuff like that. But maybe he developed an addiction. Maybe he developed an eating disorder because of the mukbangs. And we're not going to consider that in our own lives, are we? And I would say like, wasn't his... Wasn't his content before, like, Raw Till 4 or something? I seem to remember before he got into the really, the really massive mukbang spreads and started getting super unhealthy with it with all the junk food, didn't he? Like, he was Nicocado Avocado. He used to eat a ton of avocados. He used to eat vegan. And for a while, he used to eat raw. And these are all quite extreme diets. And I'm not judging anyone who's vegan or anything like that. But I'm saying that he wasn't eating in a particularly balanced way, even when he wasn't overweight. But once he started implementing a lot of junk food, we saw him gain a lot of weight. So I think he would have had some issues around food to begin with. So I don't know, but yeah. But he basically just like, he barely made any videos. He would release some here and there, but they weren't like, you know, I, I stopped watching him because I was like, where's Nick, you know? But so he was gone for a while. He had a lot of time to, to work on his health behind the scenes. Yeah, and so do you. Well, maybe not in terms of your lifespan anymore, but you've just sat there and told us that you don't need to worry about your paydays. I don't think that's true. I don't think you'll ever forget your payday. I'm not blaming you for that. But if you've got your payment plan back in Canada, you're going to need your payday if for nothing else but that. And I don't think if YouTube completely dried up that Salah would be with you. That, that's just the basic truth. I don't believe it. But in theory, based on what you're telling us, 
you don't need to worry about the money anymore because you've got Salah and he provides and he can get payday every day from his business, then why don't you take the time to do the same? I know the answer. I know it's more complicated. I know even if she did, it wouldn't guarantee success. And I know she wouldn't be as willing to access the help that I'm sure Nick Cardo accessed. There's a whole variety of reasons she wouldn't be successful, but she has the ability to try based on what she's trying to sell us. <clears throat> I just said that, Giovanna. I just said maybe he did. How he was she is. And he was healthy before he did the mukbangs. So he wasn't obese for very long, is what I'm saying. You know? No, I don't think my platform enables me to win a because people watch me no matter what I do. It's not like I'm dependent on making huge mukbangs and stuff in my face. You did that for years, and you still do that. And even when you don't film it, you're doing that because you tell us you do it or we see evidence that you've done it. If you choose not to monetize it, then given that it's actually no healthier for you to hide it, and that's probably just forming part of your binge eating disorder, then more fool you because at this point, even though it's killing you, this is all you have. You may as well make some money off of it. If I don't want to, you know, the more you talk about somebody, good or bad, actually that is probably even piques people's interest even more. Cause it, but you don't need reactors, right? Reactors shouldn't do that. Go check your them? I don't know. <coughs> Karma fully. Okay, then go order pasta and pizza with ravioli. I roll, I roll, I roll. Please, arrest this, girl, this. Buster, I'm working on the home gym, which we'll never use, but just in case, lol. How does it go? This man, he talks in maths. He goes as well. Cut off ordering apps when she gets home, Salah. This, that's from Buster. Like a fridge, he's like a detune radio. Salah's absent. Buster, I unsubscribed the ordering app already because Chantel obviously will react well to that and that will stay off. But again, notice it's on his phone and not hers. Yeah, I regret my tattoos, period. But what can you do when you're at a point in your life when you think a certain way and like tattoos? You could remove them if they offend you so much. <laughs> you know. It's not like you're to do. This is not time. I did nothing else. but cower away from the world because I was depressed and I missed mm -hmm. my husband. The cybers mm -hmm. here for emergency vehicles are like, ribble, ribble. It's Riveting content. Are you particularly worried about emergency vehicles at the moment, Chantel? As opposed to Canada where they're like, <laughs> You know, trees, graveyard. Yeah, I don't care how many Michael B. Sweaties I have a heart attack over it. Michael B. Petty hasn't made a video in years. He trolls on Twitter, which she never goes on, you guys. But I don't know why she's still so mad about him. It's not like he's active on YouTube. I wish I told him off back then. I don't care. I'll do what I want. Yeah. All right. So just live in the past then. Yeah. The perfect example of you not caring is taking a reactor who actually doesn't react to you anymore. And just letting them live in your brain rent free. I don't care what you think, okay? I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. And there's also a market where I bought a block of cheese. <coughs> yeah, I miss my fan fan. Chances of that block of cheese exists. <laughs> and I hate saying that all the time because I know it stresses you out big. Like I'm sure it's, you know, because you like you know, like you feel the pressure of like yeah. stresses him out because he thinks you're gonna come back early. Stay there. Us missing each other. And... I'm not holding up. I'm always messaging him like every second of the day. I miss you. Eh, I miss you. Eh. My belly hurts from the. I'm gonna, I have to go to the bathroom. Can you guys entertain yourselves? <laughs> well, we're not dependent on you to entertain us, love. <laughs> I have a mukbang coming out. I had a big meal. Holy. Oh, that's why I belly hurts. It was so expensive. Probably the most expensive meal I've eaten in a while. But I couldn't finish it. I swear to God, she was gonna say it's a treat. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. They give you a huge portion. Huge portion. So, it's worth it once in a while. Once in a while being twice a day. I hate, I hate the trip between Canada and the Middle East. I've done, to be fair, I've done it like six times now. So, <clears throat> I think it's what, I've been six? I'm done, I'm done for now with that. I, I just can't. Vacation content, really? I've been sick as a friggin' dog. I've been like, ugh. But you haven't been to the doctor to fix it. Don't sit there and say, I've been all been so sick either go to a hospital or go outside i even you know i was really sick it's true clinic is for old ladies well i'm old hey you're younger than me shut up <laughs> can we all get along yes we must all get along and no drama thank you i hear this all night people coming in and out because you can rent this place like an apartment i think so people coming in and out i'm 
always wondered why she didn't do that this time. I mean, I guess she's just reliant on, um, on takeout anyway, so it doesn't matter. But when I went to Dubai, I stayed in like a furnished apartment hotel and it was quite cheap, but it's just so comfortable to have an actual apartment set up. I think she would have been happier in it. Aren't you living here permanently, like in a hotel setting? What am I gonna eat? Yeah, sometimes I really enjoy these little um, text things because it reminds me of things I wanted to say. You literally said your belly hurt because you ate something really huge. What am I gonna eat? You could choose <laughs> you not to eat anything. I know people, some people were commenting about me sitting beside another big girl in the plane. And like, whenever we were, what's funny is whenever we were lining up to get to board, okay? Mm. This woman, I noticed her because she was the only, her and I were the only big women in the whole plane, okay? Right. So she must have boarded before me. I, I lost sight of her. And I go to look for my seat and of course, Murphy's Law, of course. My seat is right beside her. Okay, so Chantelle always gets the window seat. So this woman was in the middle. So we're like squished like this together. Yeah. And then it just so happened. Because if neither of them are in the aisle, there's no way for them to go, you know? You, you know that, you hear that announcement, that glorious announcement of the captain saying, all passengers board. And then you're like, yeah, and then you move to an empty seat. So she, so this guy that was at the end got to move and she moved to that other seat, so. The guy at the end got to move. That poor guy, can you imagine if that flight had been full? Just having to be encroached upon for the entire however long a flight it was. This is why Chantal needs to book two seats. There was a seat in between us and she didn't know like, any English, but much English, but she, she looked at me and looked at the empty seat and said, relax, like pointed to us, like we get to relax with this extra seat. It wasn't an extra seat. It was somebody's seat. Somebody who had to move because he couldn't comfortably sit in his. Like, yes. <laughs> Blocked part. I bought the snacks mostly for me, but she eats most of them behind my back and thinks an emoji is going to make that better. No, just turn on her, Salah. Are you outing me? You're fucking outing me. <laughs> He's going to catch hell for that later. <laughs> And I eat the snacks behind his back, which I do, I do. Yeah, of course you do. I do. When he's on the phone doing business at two in the morning and you're mainlining snacks for the camera, we don't think he knows. We think you're hurrying them in before he comes out. Just recently he's like, he just thought, I would like an ice cream. <laughs> and I was on video with him. And I was like, oh no, he's going to notice they're all gone. Okay. And you could have offered to get him one if you were that worried. <laughs> He opens the freezer on video, always. and I'm cringing, and one moment, one moment, ice cream sandwich comes tumbling down to a valley of frozen, uneaten vegetables. All the vegetables she'll never put in her food. <laughs> and it drops in his hand, and he's like, what? The four boxes of multi-pack ice cream she bought. Are you gonna use our home gym bees? Oh, babe, how often? If we have a nice gym set up, I will use it like every day. If you have a nice gym set up, so it'll be your fault if I don't. To be honest, most easily available home gym setups, I feel, and again, I don't, I don't mean to be unkind, but they have weight limits and I don't feel like she would necessarily be able to use them. That's one thing with having a commercial gym setting is that it tends to be more heavyweight machines. I'll try to, like, I'll make it part of my routine, you know? I get up from the screen and throw that rabbit hole if you order it. Ha <laughs> you can. Me, 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 me. Just makes it more likely that she'll order it. No, I should order something else, eh? It's apple season right now in Canada. Okay, babe, we have to promise we have to go for apple season next year and eat apple pie from Marlin Orchards. Last time she got apples from the orchard, she complained they were mealy because she got ones intended for cooking, I think it was. Um, if I do get something, I'm not getting something on camera because everybody will be judging what I get. Because <laughs> you're not used to that. Oh no, I'm too delicate for that. Meanwhile, you ordered three sets of ravioli the other day. And you've just told us how much your belly hurts because you had a massive meal that you couldn't finish. They had a deal at potato corn and I want to try it because apparently it's one of those like must try places. You know, she could have, if she wanted to theme this around eating, she could have literally printed off or taken someone else's list of, oh, must try locations in Thailand. And she could have gone through them one by one. That could have been all of her content if that's what she wanted. <clears throat> On the list. I feel like I should be able to, to be alone. Oh. However many edibles she took between the last clip and this clip, they are hitting. <laughs> you can see her. No matter who you are, at some point you're going to miss home if you have an attachment to it. 
You see how her eyes and her voice has changed? That is high Chantel. You know, I'm so tired. Why did I order food and I have to wait for it? Why did you take <laughs> edibles while you were waiting? I'm so tired. I don't know, I'm so giving up, honestly. We'll go live after. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, so there we are. That's Chantel for now. I'm sure she'll be back, because what else has she got to do? And I will see you then. Bye-bye.